we were going around shouting crop de nair, which <laughs> our team had been told was the translation bogeys. And then I think we got a complaint saying, you know that crop de nair doesn't actually uh, translate to bogeys. It translates to... The bungalow. Oh, yes. Yeah. You've done lots of things, but that is mm-hmm. that is your um, creme de la creme, isn't it? Is, it is, really, but yeah. It's our uh, New York, New York moment, I suppose you'd say, yeah. Um, it's uh, It was the big one. We hit the big time with it, yeah, yeah. And I can, everyone will remember it. And remember, always remember us for that, I think. And bogeys as well. That obviously took us into a whole new stratosphere. Yeah. That went crazy. Like, like we were talking about just before we came, uh, came on the pod, there'll be I, 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 99% of people of our generation, Stevie, will have grown up watching these guys and, and, and loving it. But even that 1% that didn't, Will have no, will, will know bogeys and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Fiona just reminded me of um, a game on the way up, the stickers one, where you oh, put the stickers yeah. on people. I'd seen that, and again, not <laughs> re- remembered it was you two that had done that. That was actually called Eeny Mini Macaraca Rara Dominaka Shiki Papa Dicky Wapa Om Pom Stick. That's what the game was called. <laughs> We had to introduce it as that on a Saturday morning as well. <laughs> Just for any listeners who might not have seen the show, can you try and try <laughs> to explain the premise of it? Nah, screw yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get on YouTube and watch it. There's a lot of clips on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, okay, so the premise was it was a the set of a bungalow, apparently mine and Rich's bungalow. With a lift uh, in it. Yeah, with a lift in it, and then a team of like six mates would come over, kids who would come and uh, sit in the bungalow and play loads of ridiculous games and try and earn points for the games that they were playing and the one who got the most amount of points over the course of a weekend was the king or queen of the bungalow. This is how old it was. This is, you know, so before, you know, 02 to 06, there was no social media or anything. So there was no email, really. Email was quite new still at the time. Mm-hmm. So you'd have to literally go to a, a one, of, you know, one of those photo booths in a train station, get passport photos of all your mates, staple them to an actual um, application, application form. form that you printed out and post it to the BBC. Oh, That's what? how old school it was. To, to get on the show. To get yeah. on the show. So we'd have bags of these, you know, Letters and application forms that you would have to try and sift through them all. Yeah, no uploading photos onto a form and emailing yeah. it. Now, because of the attention span of like the Gen Z or like yeah, yeah, the TikTok, yeah. no one would be be oh, bothered to do that. Wouldn't now. even think no. about it. Yeah, and oh. in the in, in its pomp, in the show's pomp, would how many how many applications? Oh, would you... Thousands. Yeah, thousands. And and the the, mail, the mail bags used to arrive yeah. up at East Tower yeah. with with a, a TV centre, just piles and piles. And piles. I would say, and it, it was what every kid wanted or in the country. Every kid just wanted. To I would be say on that every show. time yeah. we're in the pub at the moment, you get a, one person a night that would come would come up, comes up to us and says, "I applied to be on your show, and I never got on it." <laughs> You. Uh, and I'm set yeah. on, on my own having my pint saying, yeah. go away. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about bogeys. I know we mentioned yeah, yeah, it yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, again, I'm going to need you to describe it just yeah. because we don't know which listeners won't yeah. have so heard of it. Bogeys go into a quiet building or, or a place, yeah, at like a museum or a library or whatever, and you start saying bogeys with a mate uh, between you, saying it louder and louder and louder until one of you bottles out or until one of you can't shout it as loud as the other one. Simple as that. Yeah, and you, you, the idea is you're just, you're in permanent state of anxiety because yeah, yeah. you are in such a tense atmosphere and you don't want to have to do it but you've got to because you've been paid to do it and the <laughs> producer has said you've got to do it uh, and we remember clearly the first day it happened like the producer Steve just said look go to Madame Two Swords take it in turns to say the word bogeys and end up screaming the place down next to uh, a statue of Alan Titchmarsh or something <laughs> <laughs> so we went, all right, we just did what we were told. All right, fine. Just walked in there, and before you knew it, we were screaming bogeys. I walked out, just got the taxi, and went home. <laughs> Didn't think anything <laughs> of it. Oh, that was good fun. Yeah, good uh, And then we just kept having to do more and more, and again, it became the signature dish. And there's that one in the library in Glasgow that is going round at the motorway. Well, it's going round again, isn't it? You know, people it. keep viewing it. Yeah, yeah. What and was that know, one? Obviously in a library, you shouldn't, yeah, you know. Yeah. And we were there playing bogeys in a library. Did you get kicked out? Glasgow. Well, they, this guy started moaning and complaining, yeah, so he got to get moved on. But how, I, how I still you, got my last one in. How, <laughs> <laughs> how do you keep your bottle? Because I think I'm someone who's like, I'm quite out there, I'd, I'd, but mm. I don't know if I'd be able to do that. Like, yeah, I know what you mean. It was tough. Some of them were tough, weren't they? Yeah, I think, I think you know, you used to do, we did a, a, a selection of them called Extreme Bogies, oh, yes. where we did them in real extreme. So we did like in a lecture hall, a student lecture hall in Bournemouth. We thought they'd be up for it, being students. No, nope. hated it. The lecture, yeah. lecturer was not up for it. The students wanted to learn and get their heads down and learn. Mm. And we screwed the whole thing up. Another one in a yoga studio in, in Primrose Hill. Oh, yeah. That didn't yeah. go down very well. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> motorbike museums in yeah. Italy. Oh yeah, we did Euro bogies as well, and we went all over Europe with it, didn't we? Oh, oh is that, that story. Yeah. That was a good one in France. Yeah, we we went to uh, where did we do it in Paris? Somewhere in Paris, yeah. another gallery or something, art gallery or something, and um, we were going round chatting Crop de Nair, which <laughs> our team had been told was the translation bogies. <laughs> anyway, it's not till it went out on BBC One, and everyone found it funny, and da da da. And then I think we got a complaint saying. You know that Crot de Nair doesn't actually uh, translate to bogeys. It translates to no shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been walking around this gallery in Paris, and this went out on BBC One. Crot no de Nair. shit! <laughs> <laughs> Did you get many into uh, any kind of sort of live splashback from the public that you couldn't... Oh, yeah, no, could... I got put up against the wall, didn't I, at the uh, London Aquarium. Yeah, basically Rich went up behind someone and shouted bogeys at them. Yeah. Behind their head, they were looking at some fish in a... Box. Yeah. Um, box, <laughs> You've just summed box. up aquariums. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. In a box. yeah. Um, so he did that. And then, but what he didn't know is that the guy had his newborn oh, yeah. baby strapped oh. to his front. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. And you become, when you have your first child, you become like silverback gorilla, right? You yeah, know, yeah. you become ultra protective. Yeah. And you just turn around, add Rich up against the wall by his throat. Yeah. And it was not a pretty. Call him the maker of horror films. Did, did, was it uh, when you explained that it was for a BBC show? Would, yeah. would, would, would they would the public ease off a bit more then? Because at <laughs> first they think you're just too crazy. Well, it, people. Beca- yeah. it became harder to do it uh, because more and more people knew about it. Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah. It, so that actually lost the jeopardy of it all and the the kind of anxiety of it all. Yeah. Because when you turn up somewhere like let's say in a in a, in a cinema. You shout bogeys, and then they go bogey, and then everyone's shouting yeah, everyone's it. Before you know, I was so good that we never did it at the golf match, though. Uh, so that's the place it should yeah. have happened, really. Yeah. Bogey, you know. One thing I did want to talk about: mm. House of Commons. Oh, that! <laughs> it's got to be mentioned. Yes, I, I read a f- stat saying you were the s- you were only the second yes. ever kids' TV presenters yep. or show, show that yep. was mentioned in the House That's of Commons. Right, yeah. yep. The first one being Blue Peter. Blue Peter. Why the fuck was Dick and Don mentioned in the House of Commons? <laughs> there was this MP called Peter Love and he took it, he walked in one day in, on his daughter was on her uh, uh, internet mm. looking at uh, playing a game because by the end of the bungalow by the last series you know the internet was taken off properly and so the BBC were making games so there was a, a, a game on the bungalow website called Make Dick Sick. It's a game we used to play on the show mm-hmm. where you can write in with a horrible story and if it makes me sick, you win. You know, right. I had a mouthful of vegetable soup and da da da. Mm-hmm. So he took a dislike to this and stood up in the House of Commons and explained to the Parliament that this should be banned. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that it was not the stuff of public service broadcasting. No, that's it. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. He... Uh, don't you need. Oh, it's because he obviously he was th- a politician. I, I was, was going to say you was, needed. That was one of those light bulb moments, though, that when, when you're starting to get debated in, in Parliament, yeah. you know something's going very right. Right. You know, yeah. and it, was, it was also a testimony as to what the show was. It was either you had a lot of shows around then that were vanilla, and certainly a lot now mm. that they are just 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 standards. They mm. don't offend anyone. Mm-hmm. They don't make anyone particularly happy. They're just there, yeah. right? Yeah, They're, yeah. And the whole thing about that show and a lot of others around that time, like TFI Friday, the Big Breakfast, you know, Bottom, anything with Rick Mahelly, and all that kind of era. There was challenging programs, mm. and it didn't make everyone happy. It upset some people, but I think if you've got a choice between having a show that's just one level or a level where some people don't like it, but a lot of people freaking love it, yeah, go for that. Yeah, that, that's yeah, where we should that. have played bogeys, PMQs. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the fin- that, maybe that's it. That's the comeback. Maybe that's the comeback. The last ever bogeys ever, ever, ever will be at PMQs. <laughs> All right, let's trust. Have some of this. <laughs> <Bogey>! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.